Greetings dear learners. So far this week, we have understood how a model UN conference takes place. We started with the pre-conference phase, exploring the question how to join a model UN conference. After which, we have explored the conference phase and answered the question what happens in a model UN conference. Here, we have understood the rules, operations and procedures of three of the most widely accepted rules and procedures internationally. We have focused on understanding the process starting at the roll call stage. proceeding to the beginning of the formal session through the speakers lists and the introduction speeches after which we moved on to the informal session where we learned about the lobbying sessions and the moderated caucuses while comparing various rules of procedures and essentially through these phases and stages we have established how a committee functions in recognizing problems and arriving at common areas of agreement in this module we will proceed to the final stages of a model un conference that would essentially focus on how conferences get together and decide upon a decision on the issues at hand or prepare a set of solution based on the agenda but before we move any further pause this video for 2 minutes and answer the question that would appear on your screen coming back to our football example consider that you and your friends have discussed various strategies and understand each other's views and plans to win the match Now how will you consider all these individual views and strategies and form a combined game plan? Think and write a few methods for the same. Your possible responses might include voting and selecting a strategy based on the agreement of majority of the members, compromising, suggesting small changes to each other's ideas, making a strategy through all the common elements. These are a few strategies that are also very commonly used in a model UN conference in its final stage where delegates try to solve the problem at hand after days of discussion and deliberation. However, similar to various other phases and stages even in this stage of the conference, the rules and procedures for arriving at this stage happen differently based on different rules and procedures. Following the process involving formal speeches and informal communication between delegates, by this stage the delegates are aware about each other's motivations, stances, preferences, solutions, and thus form groups and alliances called blocks. These blocks are groups which are formed based on common interests and shared solutions. Portfolios might have ideas, solutions, and points that might be in conflict. For example, USA might refer to and look at the Russian-Ukraine conflict. as a russian invasion whereas russia would prefer to refer to this as a special operation and see this as a preemptive defensive move and thus might have direct conflict this kind of conflict exists in economic strategies political ideas approaches towards military and human rights solutions among others thus many blocks are formed not only based on commonalities but also as opposition to other blocks blocks are one topic we will be exploring further in our next week's module But one thing that's important to note here is that blocks are formed and are guided towards the end goal of draft resolution which is the official document that is the report of all the discussion that happens in the committee throughout the 3 days of conference and suggests solutions and ideas on behalf of the committee thus each block depending on their view of the problem and solutions to the agenda come up with their own draft resolution under the UNA USA procedure Each draft resolution is represented by two sets of delegates the sponsors and the signatories each draft resolution has a set number of sponsors usually 3 as specified by the committee dais who decides this based upon the number of blocks and overall strength of the committee these sponsors are responsible for the draft resolution and represent the draft resolution in the following phases A draft resolution also requires signatories who are delegates in the committee willing to consider the draft resolution for a debate. Delegates can choose not to become either and still participate in the debate. Delegates cannot be sponsors for two draft resolutions, but delegates can sponsor one and become a signatory for another draft resolution. There can be multiple draft resolutions in a committee and they need not always be opposing each other. They can cover different elements of the agenda from different perspectives. and give the committee a holistic document in the end the draft resolution is made by blocks and is sent to the committee dais members for approval when a committee dais member reads the document and notes that there are no grammatical documental or factual errors in the document then the document is deemed fit to be tabled for debate 
the committee then proceeds to a vote to table the dr and discuss it which needs a simple majority to pass there are two methods to discuss a tabled dr one is the clause by clause method where each clause is read out loud and is put to individual vote here the committee dais also allows other delegates to ask questions on each clause which is answered by the sponsor the second method is one for and one against method where the sponsors of the draft resolution give their speeches in support of the draft resolution and a group of equal number of delegates give their speech opposing it delegates are also allowed to ask questions to each one of the team the committee through an informal vote decides upon the method it would use to discuss the draft resolution and notify the committee dais un for mn procedure has a rather unique method of drafting resolutions where different blocks with their resolutions enter into negotiations in an effort to merge their draft resolutions into a single document this is done during the informal informal consultations as delegates find each other's common areas and differences before reaching a consensus on the resolution of the committee each draft resolution will have sponsors who are authors of the document and co-sponsors who are the delegates willing to debate the document unlike in the una usa procedure there are no limits to the number of sponsors for a dr allowing multiple delegates to add their points note that even a single delegate can submit their draft resolution but it should be made sure that the single draft resolution is supported by other members through lobbying after the negotiation phase a single united dr is formed with compromises and concessions from all the blocks followed by the submission of the dr to the committee dais for approval as the dr is approved it is placed on the floor of the committee for possible amendments the time and procedure the dr is formed by blocks during their lobbying sessions with a single main presenter of the document this document is then submitted to the official review panel that suggests changes in wording and grammatical framework of the document upon which the document is finally approved and is sent to the committee dais members after different draft resolutions are approved they are tabled for debate in the committee in a similar fashion this is followed by the main submitter being invited to the floor to read all the operative clauses or the solutions or suggestions part of the document after which the main submitter is given 3 minutes to deliver a speech regarding the draft resolution following this the committee enters into a debate and amendment phase coming to the amendment stage in una usa procedure there are two types of amendments first is the friendly amendment which are those amendments that all the sponsors agree to even if one of the sponsors disagree with the amendment then that would be called an unfriendly amendment which would be then put to a committee vote it would take a simple majority to pass such an amendment after the amendments are placed in the draft resolution and the committee has no further points of discussion over the draft resolution the finalized document is put to a vote under un for mn procedure when a draft resolution reaches the floor it's adopted generally by a consensus where there is no provision for formal voting if the committee informally expresses a need for voting or amendments the committee then reaches the amending stage here delegates wanting amendments send their amendments as an official written document which will then be voted upon by the delegates and the time and procedure when a draft resolution is completed and is approved by the committee dais members it is tabled for debate following this the main submitter of the draft resolution delivers a speech on the document after which the committee dais opens the floor for points of information with the approval of the main submitter the main submitter can accept deny or specify the number of points of information one is willing to take according to the preference of the main submitter the points of information session takes place or is bypassed by the floor following which the main submitter yields the time back to the floor or to another delegate who is generally one of the co-authors of the draft resolution after the possible speech of another delegate to whom the time is yielded the committee dais opens the floor for delegate speeches and amendments here delegate give their speeches talking about the agenda the resolution and suggest amendments that are received by committee dais members delegates unlike in the other procedures should not only send the written document for amendments but when the committee dais opens the floor for speeches the delegates willing to introduce amendments should motion to introduce their amendments in the committee following which the delegate should give a brief speech explaining one's amendment after this 
the floor will be opened again for points of information on the amendment and also for speeches first for and then against this amendment this process continues until the overall time allotted by the committee dies at the beginning of the debate elapses following the speeches amendments and points of information on them the committee moves into voting both on the amendments and the overall resolution Voting results in any parliamentary procedure has three important types. Simple majority. If more than half of the committee votes are in favor of a document or a motion, it is called a simple majority. Special or qualified majority. If more than two thirds of the committee votes in favor of a document or a motion, it is called a qualified or a special majority. Veto vote. A veto vote exists in the UN Security Council with the P5 or the permanent five members. A veto vote is the power to single-handedly block a decision by an organization. If a nation decides to use a veto power, then irrespective of the majority, any decision that a committee is willing to take will be blocked. For voting on substantial matters like working papers and primarily draft resolutions, there are two methods of presenting and voting: paragraph vote or divide vote or division of proposal, which involves reading a document by each paragraph. or by each clause and voting upon each clause or paragraph individually the second is document vote which involves a combined vote on the document as a whole generally voting on procedural matters happens as the committee dais calls out yes or no as delegates raise their placards depending on their preference vote on substantive matters happen as the committee dais takes a roll call and each delegate responds with their preference of yes no or abstain this is not just restricted to a substantive matter as delegates can choose to raise a motion to move into a vote by roll call even for certain procedural votes such as the moderated caucus it is important to note that the veto pass can only be used during a vote for the draft resolution and not during any procedural matters as this can risk halting the committee procedure itself keeping this in mind let us explore how voting under different rules of procedures takes place under the un and usa procedure this vote happens in three phases phase 1 where the delegates can vote yes yes with rights no no with rights or abstain that is depending on their voting preference on day 1 Phase 2 of voting is for delegates who have voted yes or no with rights which is fundamentally against their foreign policy or the beliefs of their portfolio and would like to explain their voting stance through this the delegates get a right to speak generally for a period of 1 minute each where they explain themselves that is if they have voted against their foreign policy after this phase the final third phase arrives where the delegates have to vote yes or no to the draft resolution After this third phase of voting if the draft resolution gets a simple majority of votes it is adopted as a resolution for the committee if the dr fails to get this majority the document fails and by default the committee too fails in case of unsc a delegate needs to get not only the simple majority but also the vote of all the p5 members and even if one p5 member chooses not to vote the dr fails Committees that fail can draft additional documents such as press releases or communiques explaining the happenings in the committee and specifying the reasons for failure of the draft resolution. These parts of the committee stand at the discretion of the committee dais and can happen only if the committee dais feels it's necessary. After this, irrespective of the draft resolution being adopted or rejected, the delegate should motion to adjourn the debate as with this the committee comes to an end. Under UN for Women procedure, the committee moves into voting only when the dr is not unanimous and is adopted by consensus under this the committee first takes and votes upon amendments amendments affecting the meaning and the structure of the original texts are voted upon first and any similar amendments affecting the clause in a similar manner are rejected automatically once an amendment is placed and is voted upon and is passed by a simple majority it is placed in the draft resolution UN for Women draft resolutions if not accepted by consensus are often voted upon in a clause by clause method if not even one clause passes the document then the document automatically fails and those clauses that pass are eventually adopted as the resolution it is important to note that just like the UN and USA procedures yes and no with rights under UN for Women procedure the delegates are allowed to explain their vote in case of consensus vote they can choose to explain their position 
This generally happens before the voting session whereas some conferences allow it after the resolution is adopted and before the committee adjourns. With the formal consultations, informal consultations, drafting and voting process with the explanation done, the committee finally adopts the DR and adjourns the session. Under time and procedure, after a rigorous process of tabling the draft resolution, presenting it and adding amendments, the committee finally reaches the voting process. Under this, each amendment and draft resolution would require a special majority vote to pass. Delegates who have in their roll call voted present would have a chance to abstain. Delegates who have opted present and voting stance in their roll call should give a decisive yes or no vote. Unlike in UNA USA procedure, under Thaiman, the abstention votes are not considered in the final result of the draft resolution and are counted as a not yes, not no result. Thus, the final votes which are counted should be a definite yes on the DR, which are supposed to be two third. Finally, just like the rest of the procedure, Thaiman procedure 2 allows the delegates to explain their vote. This right is taken away only when a delegate is the main presenter of the draft resolution. After the voting and passing of the resolution, the session is finally adjourned. In this video, we have primarily discussed various rules and regulations participants follow in a model UN conference both during and before the simulation. However, it is important to note that there are no official methods of rules of procedures available and different organizations amend their rules of procedures depending upon their goals in the conference. It is also important to remember that model UN conferences often mix and match different parts of rules of procedures to match their needs. For example, a conference can opt to have a formal procedure from a UNA USA procedure or choose to have voting and amending methods similar to that of Thaiman. Thus, it is also vital to thoroughly go through your model UN conference's rules of procedures manual before the conference in order to ensure that you are in line with the rules of procedures of your conference and understand different elements used in it that might have been picked up from different procedures. Now let us summarize our learning this week. In the first video, we have explored a few general norms of formal conferences that are commonly seen in MUNs. These were speaking formally, diplomatically and in third person, dressing in western formals generally or occasionally in traditional formals, speaking primarily in English or other forms of official languages during formal sessions, preventing crosstalk during formal sessions and respecting the role of the committee dais members as debate moderators. Following this, we covered two phases of model UN conferences by exploring three types of model UN procedures that are widely accepted in model UN conferences throughout the world. The first phase is the pre-conference phase with the processes of registration, allocation and confirmation which in cases of the committee dais applicants extends to an additional stage of the interview process. Following this, the participants receive a background guide that talks about the agenda and the rules of procedures manual that highlights the rules of procedures followed by the conference. A few conferences also ask the delegates to submit their position papers before the conference begins. Coming to the rules of procedures, there is the North American procedure or the UNA USA procedure that focuses on developing the skills of public speaking, debate and negotiation among its participants. Through its long, never exhausting general speakers list and its moderated caucus, it helps delegates enhance their public speaking skills while simultaneously through points of information enhances the skills of debate. The competitive voting process for the moderated caucuses and draft resolutions also lead to an increased role for the skills of negotiation and diplomacy among the delegates even for the slightest advancement in the committee discussions. The committee time in a UNA USA procedure is primarily focused on the formal or moderated speaking time with a comparatively shorter lobbying time. The UN for MUN procedure focuses on providing the participants with a realistic UN experience. It opens with a speaker's list moving to the informal sessions of informal informal consultations and formal informal consultations. Neither of these sessions require voting to pass since the right to expression of a delegate is a delegate's sovereign right as a representative. Similarly, there is also no voting preference that would restrict a delegate from abstaining in their final vote since this too is a display of state sovereignty. UN for MUN also encourages a unified draft resolution document thus encouraging negotiations not on the issues of procedural matters such as in the UNA-USA but on matters related to the agenda at hand 
allowing delegates to negotiate on matters related to agenda while representing the interests of their portfolio as it happens in the real world politics coming to the european or thaiman procedure which focuses on enhancing the skills of negotiation and diplomacy the committee begins with an introduction speech followed by a long lobbying session where delegates negotiate on the agenda at hand and form multiple draft resolutions depending on number of blocks in the committee after which the main presenter of the draft resolution introduces the document via a speech and takes a few questions this is followed by a speech by other delegates in the committee discussing the document this long lobbying session followed by short speeches to explain one's dr to gather votes from non supporters gives a wide scope for negotiation and diplomacy in the thaiwan procedure it's also important to note here that depending on the procedure of various conferences that aim to achieve different primary goals each conference takes place in different number of days UN USA procedure takes place from 2 to 3 days whereas UN for immune procedure accommodates the committee for 2 days at best time and on the other hand can take place from 1 day to 3 days depending on the agenda at hand these rules of procedures have provided certain basic ways to approach model un conferences for various organizations who aim to achieve different things with these conferences these procedures also establish basic guidelines for committee dais members to assess delegates for their performance and guide the committee in accordance with the aims of the chosen procedure given this many conferences from all over the world choose to mix and match various rules of procedures from different procedures and form their own types of procedure some conferences take rules from debate competitions such as rebuttal question answer sessions and add them to a model un procedure for a better debate whereas a few conferences pick up additional management brainstorming strategies such as the thinking hats or round robin sessions for a better public speaking and expression of ideas in their conference there are in reality no official rigid rules of procedures and those which we have discussed today are just some of the more frequently used and longer lasting procedures in the young yet complex world of model un conferences until this week we have looked at the model part of our course next week we will dive deeper into understanding the diplomacy part of it by exploring various public speaking researching and diplomatic skills that are used in model un conferences thank you